Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today's video voted on by our patrons is to review Trezan the Infinite from the Necron Codex. So if you want to get involved and vote on the polls that determine what videos we do on the channel, then head on over to our Patreon, which is the link at the top right of the screen right now. But there's all sorts of other different benefits, such as early access to videos, as well as personal 40k list building and tactical guidance over email. Then of course you also get your name in the credits, depending on what tier you are. So back onto today's video, Trezan the Infinite from the Necron Codex. It's a named character from the HQ slots, comes in at 5 power or a flat 100 points. There's no upgrades with him, so he will stay at 100. As far as keywords go, he is a character, a dynastic agent, so no dynasty codes here, guys. So if you refer to page 51 of your book, there's a little note at the bottom of the page that explains that these models won't affect your detachment dynasty codes. So you can go into any dynasty, he just won't benefit from the abilities. He is a noble for your command protocols and an infantry model as well as an overlord. As he's named, you can only take one of these per army. Stat-wise, he's movement 6 inch, weapon skill 2+, plus, ballistic skill 2+, plus, strength 5, toughness 5, wound 6, attacks 4, leadership 10, and a 3 plus save. So one extra wound over an overlord, which is quite common with the named noble models. Abilities, he's got the living metal ability to regain lost wounds. He's got command protocols to gain those directives each battle round, and also giving off those buffs to other units due to him being a character and a noble. He's got a 4 plus inbound save, otherwise known as a phase shifter. Then he's got my will be done, which works on any core units. Not a dynasty specific core unit, just any core unit. And it gives them a plus one to their hit rolls if they're within nine inches of him. Relentless March is his other overlord ability, which is a six inch aura for any core units to add one to their movement. His unique abilities are ancient collector, which is if he's using the dynastic heirloom stratagem, then it will cost one CP less to use. I'll go over this in more detail in the stratagem section of the review. It is worth noting that when you play Crusade, he's given out free relics, but I don't personally play Crusade, so unfortunately that's not for me. His other unique ability is the Surrogate Hosts, where if he's destroyed on a 2+, plus, he can replace any Necron character that is still in the battle, excluding named characters, and he will come back with three wounds remained in. Now, if he's your Warlord, then you'll not be considered to have been destroyed for your opponent's secondaries, i.e. Slay the Warlord. As for his weapon, he's only got the one here, which is the Empathic Obliterator, which is a melee weapon, it's strength plus two, making it a strength seven, minus one AP, and the damage is D3. Each time an attack is made with this weapon, if a character model is destroyed by the attack, each enemy within six inches of the bearer will suffer D3 mortal wounds. So a bit of an odd job weapon, strength seven is nice, but it's only minus one AP, and the damage is a bit iffy on D3. The extra ability after killing characters is very situational, but it is pretty cool and it does happen, especially against armies that are clumped up together. He's got four attacks base, and he's got no dynasty codes to support the weapon, so what you see is what you get. You're going to average 3.3 hits, and likely wounded infantry on threes, resulting in about 2.2 wounds. So really he's likely to kill a single two wounded space marine model on average. Putting him up against toughness seven vehicles probably isn't ideal, as his average damage against toughness seven with a 3 plus save is about 1.7 wounds per fight phase. So quite a mediocre model in terms of damage output. So we know he can't take Dynasty Code, so skip ahead to the Warlord traits, and as he's a named character, he's got a set trait, which is Enduring Will. Each attack allocated to your Warlord is a minus one to the damage it causes, so it's not a bad trait to have, it could be a lot worse. In terms of stratagems, there's a few to select from for him. Resurrection protocols for 1 CP, used when he's destroyed, and on a 4 plus, he will stand back up at the end of the phase with D3 wounds remaining. Now this stratagem can't be used if you're using the surrogate host ability, it's either one or the other. If you do run out of characters to morph into, then this is your last option to keep him alive. Dynastic heirlooms, which is usually 1 CP, but it will be free to use due to his ability, it allows for an additional relic for the army for a character model. Now Trezan can't himself carry relics due to being a named character, so it will need to be a third character that isn't named, as your second one already gets your first relic for free. Rarified Nobility for 1 CP allows for a second Warlord trait to be given within your army. Now a single model can't have two traits, but a second character can have it, so if Trezan isn't your Warlord, then you can still give him that minus one damage with the Enduring Will Warlord trait if you use this stratagem. So that's all the stratagems he's got access to. He can't take relics again due to being named, so that only really leaves the tactics and the conclusion. So you use this guy as a regular Overlord unit. He has all the standard Overlord abilities, which is going to be buffing your core unit, so Warriors and Immortals, and maybe Death Marks too. He could aid the Lich Guard, but without a Veil of Darkness relic, he's not the most ideal for them. 
although it could jump into a night side for them, but there are better options for this too. So really is a stay back and buff kind of model, especially with your core units. He's one of the cheapest overall options in the book. The standard overall is five points cheaper, but then you need to add on all the war gear on top which you select, and you're most likely gonna be taking something. So if you are looking to save points, then it's not the worst option. The Ancient Collector ability is nice, but it's not groundbreaking. It's just one CP saved, and you need three characters for it to actually make use of it, which completely contradicts the reason for taking him, which is to be cheap in the HQ slots. The surrogate host ability can be annoying to the opponent, but they're not likely going to be choosing Slay the Warlord as a secondary, knowing you've got him. And then you have to ask, are there many characters that are worse in the book for him to morph into? I mean, maybe you've got a lone Hexmark Destroyer perhaps, but it's rare that you're going to be fielding a Hexmark Destroyer as well as Trezan unless you're playing some sort of narrative mission. Looking at the flaws to the model, there's a fair few here. Being a Dynastic Agent really sucks, so no Dynasty buffs, no Relics, no choice of Warlord trait not even access to Revenge of the Doomstalker stratagem, as this is for Dynasty characters. When you compare him to a standard Overlord, he's very much under par for a lot of those reasons, but there are more. An Overlord can change his war gear, maybe take a War Scythe or a Staff of Light, maybe he'll add a Resurrection Orb, which is largely why you want an Overlord in the first place. This guy can't even take a Tachyon Arrow, which could be chosen with an Overlord. If he had some sort of reason to be fielded other than saving the 1 TP on a Relic, that's great. I'd rather a non-upgraded Overlord than him, as both would just stay with a blob of core troops and just aid their shooting capabilities with a plus one to hit. He's not going to be stomping up the battlefield with a weapon that's killing one Marine Intercessor per fight phase. So I kind of know already where I'm going with this, guys. With his rating, he's going to be getting a Planet 40k rating of 2 out of 5. Can't see anyone picking him over a large selection of HQs that we've got at our disposal. Even out of the named guys, he's probably near the back end of that list. I see that he has got a few plus points, but are you really taking him over a standard Overlord? I'm not. Let me know your thoughts below guys. Who fields him? What do you do with him? How do you use him? Remember to hit that like button and share the videos with your 40k buddies on other social media platforms. We're trying to get to 3000 subs here. So thanks a bunch if you are one of those people that shares the videos, likes the videos, watches the ads. It's a huge help to us at Planet 40k. Anyway guys, that's all for this week. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.